Hi everybody, I'm Robin Nistock from Nistock Farms. Thanks for joining me. Today I want to explain the basic differences and similarities between rug hooking, rug punching, and punch needle embroidery. Maybe you've wanted to try one of these, but you didn't know where to start or how to get going. All three of these fiber arts are fun and easy to learn, but terms and materials can be confusing for the novice. Some aspects are interchangeable and some are critically different. To help you avoid frustration, I'm going to walk through the basic hows and whys of these three branches of the fiber arts tree, including tools, techniques, and resources to get you started. Let's jump right in. First, let's take a look at rug hooking. Hooking is a method used to make rugs and other textiles by using a hook to pull narrow loops of cloth or yarn up through a foundation fabric. Here we have a Father Christmas who has been hooked using wool strips and wool roving and some wool curls for texture. To accomplish rug hooking, the first and most obvious tool you're going to need is a hook. A rug hook looks very much like a crochet hook with a more sturdy handle. Rug hooks come in lots of types with a variety of shapes. The shaft can be bent, the handle can be longer, the hook may be smaller or larger depending on the material you're going to be hooking with but they all accomplish the same purpose, which is to pull a loop of your hooking material up through foundation cloth. Next, we have the foundation cloth itself. Um, when you are rug hooking, you need a cloth that has a fairly open but sturdy weave so that you can get your hook down through it and your hooking material up through it. This is monk's cloth. Um, traditionally, rugs have been hooked on materials such as burlap, but burlap tends not to stand up to years of wear the way modern monk's cloth does. It will tend to break down, uh, especially if it's being walked on over time. Um, this monk's cloth also has a very helpful white line. This is a, um, a warp thread. Uh, they're spaced every two inches across your fabric. So if you are drawing a pattern and you have straight lines, it will help you orient uh, correctly. If you are mounting your foundation cloth on a frame or in an embroidery hoop, it will also help you keep the material straight so that you are not skewing and distorting uh, the warp and weft of your fabric. You will need material with which to hook. Uh, traditionally, people have used wool strips um, this is wool fabric that has been washed to a point where it's almost like felt. Uh, this fabric is cut into narrow strips, sometimes called worms, sometimes called noodles. Um, it, the width will vary depending on the look the hooker wants. Um, so the, the wool strips are one thing that you can hook with. Um, you can also certainly hook with yarn. Nothing wrong with hooking with yarn. Um, this is a worsted weight, but you can use a larger or heavier weight yarn if you wish. Um, and people are also very creative and hook with everything from pantyhose, t-shirts, silk ribbons, uh, strips of velvet, uh, basically anything that you can pull through your fabric with your hook. The next tool you're going to need for rug hooking is a frame or hoop of some kind to hold your fabric taut. This is a nice basic rug hooking frame. Uh, it, this particular one has a slant to the front of it, um, so your work is slightly tilted towards you, which I find helpful. Some people prefer it flat on top. Um, there are lots of different kinds of frames. The important things are that your frame either have legs so that you can get one hand beneath it and one hand above it, your foundation fabric, and that it have a very secure way to hold your fabric. Um, these are Howard Brush Gripper Strips. They have teeth that point out and down 
see if I can get a decent picture. Oh, this is hard. Sorry, I don't want to make you seasick. Um, but the teeth point out and down. And when you pull your fabric, the teeth grip it and keeps it taut on top. Here I have a piece of monk's cloth um, already stretched on a rug hooking frame. Um, you might think that this is tight enough. It is not. You can take the fabric and stretch it and walk it and work it tighter and do this in all directions. And here again, these white lines are helpful. I don't know if you can see this guy is kind of wavering a little bit, which tells me where I need to tighten my cloth so that it is more taut. When you have your foundation cloth properly mounted, that is tight. Um, the, the best embroidery type hoop that I've heard of using for rug hooking is a Morgan hoop. Um, a Morgan hoop has um, legs and it also um, apparently holds very tightly. I don't have any first-hand experience with that so I can't comment more than that. Um, but this is how a frame will hold the fabric. And you can see that's nice and tight. Now the next thing you're going to need in your rug hooking project is a pattern. Um, patterns are everywhere. You can certainly purchase a pattern. You can get them at a store. You can purchase and download from an artist online. Um, this particular pattern here is just drawn on paper so you will have to transfer it. You can often buy um, the pattern already printed onto the foundation fabric. Um, or you can get an entire kit that also includes whatever hooking material you're going to be using in the kit. Obviously prices commensurate. Um, you can draw your own. By all means try. Uh, you don't have to be an artist to draw something lovely for hooking. Um, you're not drawing up the architectural plans of a house. You are enjoying the creative process and whatever you draw is going to be fine and it'll look lovely. Um, you can also use magazine resources. Uh, Rug Hooking Magazine usually includes a free pattern for public use. Here's one small one. And they've also, in this particular issue, included a much larger one, which I think is lovely, and I would love to get going hooking that. So um, you can also download adult uh, coloring book pages from the computer. You can um, find free clip art and download. You can mix and match, um, you know, here's a moon, here's a pumpkin, here's a scary Halloween cat and make your own. Um, one thing though, please do be careful and respect intellectual property. If you see a pattern um, drawn by someone else, please don't just copy it and use it. Try to find the artist and get permission. Um, we need to be respectful of their um, ability to draw. This is how designers help um, support themselves and it's just disrespectful to essentially steal their pattern and use it. Now for the actual hooking I have my little worm, I have my foundation cloth on a frame, I have my hook, I take my worm and I hold it in my left hand which you can't see because it's underneath the foundation fabric and I have my hook on top. I reach my hook through and I pull up a loop. And I reach it through and I pull up a loop. And I reach it through and I pull up a loop. Whoops, I pull up a loop. There. It's that simple. Um, you will take some practice to get your loops the same height you may not want to have your loops the same height. Let's say you're doing a tree and you want it to stand out from your background. You may want your loops taller. That's fine. Pull them taller. Um, you can do the same thing with yarn. Here I have yarn underneath. I push my hook through. My left hand hands me the yarn and I pull it up. I reach down. I grab the yarn. Oops. And I pull it up. 
and that is all there is to hooking. Um, it's just a matter of practice to get your loops the same height. Um, there's great amount of artistry and fun to be had in making the design that you want. Um, if you decide something is not working for you, all you have to do is bloop, pull it out. It's gone. Take your thumbnail, scrub it over the uh, foundation fabric. It goes right back into shape and then you can give it another go. Come on. Give it another go and pull your loops back up again. That's it. That's the sum total of technique. Um, th there are fine, fine points and you will grow and experiment, but seriously, it is that easy to hook. Now, where can you find rug hooking resources? Uh, rug Hooking Magazine is an excellent place to start. Um, you can find the magazine online on rughookingmagazine.com. Um, you can also go to the local bookstore or larger, uh, even grocery store like a Tops. They probably have an issue in their magazine section. Um, Rug Hooking Magazine has been in existence a long time. They have excellent advertisers and vendors. They have a fantastic book club. Every issue of the magazine has projects and the designers are listed so you can um, follow one, one lead to another. You know, one um, project that you like, it'll say who the designer was. You go to the designer's website. They have a whole bunch of other resources for you. So Rug Cooking Magazine itself is an excellent place to start. Um, also, just do online Google searches for rug hooking materials, rug hooking designers, rug hooking classes. There is a lot of rug hooking stuff out there. Um, there may be a rug hooking guild near you. So go online and um, Google rug hooking guild near me and see what you might find. Um, there are also lots of how-to videos on YouTube. Um, many designers and uh, vendors also have their own line of videos where they demonstrate what they have and how to do it. So there's, there's a myriad of places to go find rug hooking materials. Next, let's talk about rug punching. It's also called punch needle rug hooking, which I think is confusing from the get-go since there is no hook or hooking. In rug hooking, you are pulling loops toward you to the top of the rug. In punching, you are working from the back of the piece and pushing loops away from yourself to the underside of your work, which will eventually be the top or the right side of your work. Advantages of punching over hooking include having your loops automatically the same height and being able to use yarn in a continuous strand instead of short worms. It's an excellent way to eat up the vast yarn stash that we all have. You can use any type of yarn that will fit through your rug punch. Um, this is three ply bulky, which gives a very nice texture, nice and thick and cushiony. This is a worsted weight wool yarn, which gives um, smaller loops and crisper texture. Remember that you're going to be working from the back of your work. So here's the back of this little mat and there is the front. Some people actually are using the back side as the showing side, especially if it's going on the wall because the edges are so crisp. And you can also use hand spun. This mat, this chair mat, is made out of hand spun. And you can see that it has quite a few different textures of yarn in there. But they all work. They go through the tool. And they make a very nice finished surface. Now, there are many different brands of rug punching tool. Um, the ones that I use and prefer are the Oxford. Um, you can tell they are bona fide Oxford needles because it says the Oxford and it has a little stamp on it. 
that looks like a little sh wheat, sheaf of wheat. Um, uh, they they have become so popular that there are now illegal knockoffs of these uh, rug punches. So when you are purchasing, make sure it has the Oxford stamped on the butt. Uh, so the rug punch tool is actually like a hollow hypodermic needle. Um, it is hollow all the way through, and the needle is a metal shaft um, that has an eye in it and the yarn is threaded through the handle and comes out the eye and the oxfords come in two different gauges there is the regular which will hold bulky yarn or multiple strands of a finer weight yarn and there is the fine needle which holds worsted weight and smaller um, the height, um, the, the, the height of the metal shaft is going to determine how high your loop is. Um, the loop is going to be half the height of the shaft, and I'll explain more in, the, in a minute. But basically, depending on what kind of yarn you want to use, you will either want a regular tip or a bulky, or a, excuse me, a fine tip for the the size of yarn you have. The yarn that you use, and you can use a worm if they'll fit through the eye, um, you just need to be sure that it does not hang up or drag when you're using it. It has to be able to flow freely and not get stuck on thick and thin spots or boucle or things like that. Um, outside of that you can use any material that will flow freely through that eye. Now you're going to be using the same foundation cloth for rug punching as you do for rug hooking. In other words, that nice monk's cloth that I showed you earlier. Um, but your frame can be different. You can use a rug hooking frame that has legs underneath it, but you don't need to because you're not going to need to have a hand underneath holding your worm. All your work is going to be done through your tool from the top side. So you can get just a frame. Um, this frame has the same Howard brush gripper strips for holding your foundation tightly um, and they come in lots of different sizes. There are different brands of frame. Um, we, Nistock Farms, make four regular sizes from 10 by 10 up to 18 by 18. Um, I have also seen larger frames including frames that are made from the body of a card table with the inner section cut out and just the framework around the outside of the card table for doing very large pieces. Rug punching patterns can be sourced in the same way as rug hooking patterns. The main thing you're going to have to remember is that because you are working from the back side of your work, everything will be flipped mirror image when you look at the front side of your work. So for example, here's a pattern and you have the flower oriented this way, but on the front side when it's done, the flower's oriented the other way. Um, this will probably not make a great deal of difference to you unless you are trying to portray something that you know from your own experience, like which way your house faces or some scene that you want to look to be realistic. The other thing um, that is very important when doing a rug punching pattern is to remember that if you are using letters or numbers, you're going to have to make them backwards because if you don't punch them backwards, they won't look right on the front side. They'll be backwards on the front side. So that's the one thing that you need to be careful of when using a punching pattern. Now for the actual punching. Here I have a work in progress. Um, this is a small mat that I'm working on. This is the back side because my pattern's on the back. This is actually going to be the front side and right now it looks like the dog's dinner because it has a million of these little ends sticking out but uh, they will be clipped off flush when I'm done and I'll tidy it up by nudging loops where they need to be and it will end up looking quite crisp like this. So, for the actual punching, I have my fine 
needle threaded with a worsted weight yarn and the tip of it is fairly sharp. I mean it's not sharp enough to cut yourself but you can hurt yourself if you try. So the point is what will help you get it through the fabric. You plunge it all the way into the wooden shoulder. By plunging it all the way in every time the loop that you leave on the other side will automatically be the same height every time. So there isn't a learning curve as with rug hooking where you have to learn how to make your loops all the same height. It's fairly automatic. Then I lift the needle and when the point just clears the fabric I advance it a little bit and I plunge it in again. Lift, plunge, lift, plunge, lift, plunge. I'm following the contour of the pattern and I just advance the needle just enough to get away from the last loop that I just did and I work my way around the pattern and that's it that's all there is to it later I will push this tail end through to the front side so that I can cut it off flush and again the front side doesn't look very inspiring at the moment but after it gets finished and cleaned up it'll look quite nice. So that's all there is to punching. Resources for punch needle rug hooking. There are a lot of good sources. Um, the Bible at the moment is Amy Oxford's punch needle rug hooking book. This is the newest edition. It's an absolutely beautiful book. It is just full of how to how to make it look better, the right way to do it, where to get, how to make, how to figure it out, and I can't recommend this enough for both inspiration and technical knowledge. Um, there are also, there is also Rug Hooking Magazine, which also um, acknowledges rug punching and is happy to include articles and resources and guides and patterns. Um, same as they do for the hooking. Um, there are Facebook groups for rug punching. Um, the Oxford site itself, amyoxford.com, um, she has lots of videos and resources. Um, she has a list of people who sell her Oxford punch needles. And there are a myriad of videos. Amy puts out videos and if you just go to YouTube and look for rug punching videos you will get a bunch of resources there too. Now the third leaf on this branch of the fiber arts tree is punch needle embroidery. It's very similar to rug punching but the scale is much smaller. Finished products tend to be more strictly decorative, although I've seen some awesome larger pieces like table runners, panels on tote bags, or the back of jackets and the like. Patterns are worked from the back, just like rug punching, so be aware when doing letters and numbers. The punch needle embroidery tool looks quite similar to the rug punching tool in that it is a hollow hand piece with a needle that has an eye and you thread your punching material through it. Um, this uses good old embroidery floss. Um, the needle size can be changed to accommodate smaller threads. Um, you can split a normal six strand of embroidery floss into three strands or even one strand if you have some very fine details to do. Um, also, the depth of the needles can be changed. Right there on the hand piece, you just dial, dial that little guy and make the needle go either longer or shorter. Um, this is very handy if you want to have texture in your piece. For example, here is the shortest loop versus the longest loop and if you want to have I don't know um, green tree boughs stick out from a background um, you can get a three-dimensional effect quickly just by dialing your handpiece rather than having to change handpieces. 
The foundation cloth you're going to use for punch needle embroidery is different from the rug hooking and rug punching foundation cloth. This is called weaver's cloth. Um, it has a much, much tighter weave than the other fabric. Um, this particular type is a 5545 polyester cotton blend. The polyester component helps it be resilient, um, which is important considering that you're going to be stabbing this fabric a million times with a very sharp punch needle. For punch needle embroidery, you can use either a frame with gripper strips or an embroidery hoop. The difference between um, an, a punch needle embroidery frame specifically and the rug punching frame is that this is more shallow. Um, you can use a rug hooking or rug punching frame to do punch needle embroidery. You cannot easily use a punch needle frame punch needle embroidery frame for hooking because you can't get your hand under it nor can you easily use a punch needle embroidery frame for rug punching for the simple reason that the rug the longest rug punch needle is longer than the longest punch needle needle and so this depth of frame is okay for your punch needle. It won't hit your table, but if you use a punch needle embroidery frame for rug punching, you're going to hit your table. So just be aware when you are looking at items and trying to decide what you want and what you need that the punch needle embroidery frame is dandy because it's small, it's compact, you can take it where you need to take it and it does exactly what you need it to do with this tool, but it is not going to work for this tool or for your rug hooking. Also, if you are punch needle embroidering, you will find some brands of punch needle frame have a turntable option, which is lovely for following contours, you're not turning your frame on the tabletop. You're not constantly rolling your frame in your hand. You can just use the turntable. This particular turntable, you can lift your frame off of and check your work, see how your work is coming, and then set it back on the turntable. It's a small thing, but it's something to consider when you're looking at equipment. Now, patterns and resources for punch needle embroidery um, are largely the same as for rug hooking and rug punching in that you can certainly draw your own pattern or you can pull patterns from the interwebs. Um, you can download patterns that you find on Etsy, things like that. Um, my favorite source, honestly, is Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Magazine. Um, this is a lovely quarterly publication um, that is holiday or seasonally themed. And every issue contains anywhere from 12 to 20 projects. And one thing that I really like about these projects is that every single one features the full-size pattern to make what they're showing you, full instructions on how to make it, and the designer, how to get hold of the designer, and all the instructions that you could possibly need. So that's a lot of fun because who wants to see a pretty pattern and think oh where the heck do I get this well here's all the information if you want to contact the designer but the darn pattern is right in here for you to use so punch needle and primitive stitcher is a grand magazine and like here here's one for autumn you've got this charming autumn themed design and Here's the full-size pattern ready for you to use right out of the magazine. And look at they used one of those old-time boxy cheese grater thingies to mount it on, and then they put little tiny lights inside it, so it's like a night light. Who would think of something clever like that? I wouldn't. So it's so much fun to look through and see their different ideas. And they also have shop interviews in this magazine so if you are traveling um, you can find needlework shops that you might not have otherwise found they do quite in-depth interviews which is really nice and 
the holiday or the Christmas issue is gigantic. How cute is that? And they have a whole bunch of really good vendors who advertise in every issue so you can find other resources right from this magazine. Um, also, of course, there are online Facebook groups for punch needle embroidery. There are also um, shops, needlework shops, just Google punch needle embroidery near me. You can find classes. A lot of teachers now are teaching online, so if you can't make it to a festival or a class, you can still take a class. You're just going to take it online. So thanks for joining me for this introduction to hooking and punching. I hope I've been clear, but if you have any questions or comments, please don't be shy about contacting me. You can go to our website, nistockfarms.com, and work through the contact email page. Or you can go to Facebook. Our business page is Nistock Farms, and send me a PM. If emailing, be sure and check your spam folder if you don't hear back from me within 24 hours. Our .com email tends to land in spam folders far too often. So that's it. Thanks, and have a great day.